mm-hmm. you know, there's friends of mine who are earning 80 grand a year, 100 grand a year, and just literally writing records from their bedrooms, you know? Yeah, yeah. And it's happening, you know? Yeah. It's, but it's, it's just such a different, it's so disconnected. Mm-hmm. I don't really get that. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know if that's who I am as a musician. Hello. Hi there. How you doing? How's it going? You're right. Yeah, very good. Thanks. Good, yeah, you're right. Yeah, not too bad. It's first time uh, doing a Zoom call, so I'm all quite nervous about any technical difficulties. But it seems like we're all right. I know. I'm not. I'll be honest. I'm not very technical myself. So uh, anything <laughs> goes wrong, let's not blame each other. <laughs> yeah. All right. Okay. Right, we'll do that. Um, yeah. I guess we might as well just jump jump straight into it. If you're ready. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, far cool. away, mate. Yeah, of all right, cool. Um, so yeah, thank you for taking the time to obviously chat with us. Um, how's everything been? Uh, it's good. Yeah, it's been all right actually. Um, you know, the past year has been difficult, not being able to perform with others and play shows financially, and I guess um, you know you've missed out uh, an awful lot in terms of a, a whole year promoting the Pilgrim's Tale. But um, you know, generally, it's been productive for me. I've been writing lots, so. I've tried to keep my head down, you know. Yeah, yeah. Plenty of time for the writing as well. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> How, speaking, obviously, I was, um, I know it's kind of a question I'm sure you're going to hear a lot of and have heard a lot of, but how has the pandemic been for you as an artist? And how, I mean, obviously, with the news on Monday, are you excited to sort of see a light at the end of the tunnel now as well? I mean, I, I have to say, you know, and I'm, I, I'm very excited. It's something that at least a whole industry, the entertainment industry can work towards now, yeah. um, you know, which we, we, we haven't had, you know, as much as everyone is hesitant because it's been a rocky road so far and you can't predict anything. But the fact is there's something to um, work towards now. And I, I do feel we're going to be playing shows in the summer of some capacity, which means I can earn some money again. And, you know, it's the financial and the importance of uh, being a creative artist, working with other people and, and playing in front of other people it really drives you forward. You know, without mm-hmm. that, I know there's a lot of my friends, you know, musicians who have struggled, you know, more than I have. I've had three, three kids to keep me busy homeschooling <laughs> stuff, stuff. So um, there's not, not, not uh, that many chances to, you know, fall, fall over too, too, too often. Um, but yeah, I can see why people have, have suffered an awful lot. You know, it's, it's a real struggle, isn't it? Mm-hmm. So I, yeah, I'm, I'm excited to see positive it was about time we had some good news, wasn't it? We've been uh, locked down. I think so, yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so the Freedom Fields anniversary stream, that's uh, this Saturday, um, what can we expect from it? And uh, was the plan always to do a live stream or did obviously the pandemic throw the live stream into the mix? Yeah, I mean, definitely the pandemic threw the live stream into the mix. Um, you know, it is something that uh, was suggested um, by uh, my manager, Dave Farrow, and it was a... F- brilliant idea really he, he's worked on other acts like two and breaks and levelers who have who've done these anniversary albums and you know i i've uh, always been a little skeptical i guess in the past um because i like to write and i like to make an album we can get it out every 18 months i definitely have never tired for ideas mm. um but it's uh i i actually i'm really happy he did that and and i think it's a huge success strangely to have a retrospective album like that you know revisit songs I think because it is such a special record uh, and I think it's a point in time where it was able to cross over between that sort of pop and folk, uh, the, the styles of storytelling and sentiment and, you know, um, I can, I, the sonicness, you know, the, the production, everything. I think, um, you know, it really had uh, something very special and I never really thought about that. <laughs> so I think so bringing it, back into people's attention i think it's a great idea by him so and it was a, it was a real joy to to perform definitely i mean do you think it, it do you not do you try to not revisit your old stuff too much when you play live or in general anyway so was it was it quite new for you to sort of to look back and then play something now as well yeah i mean there's a few of those songs i i would certainly ha- be playing whenever i'm performing you know the the songs that people look for i guess the singles you know like white hair and lady of the sea and so uh, songs that people would you know, expect me to play. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, but yeah, there's, there's certainly, you know, seven or eight of the songs on there that I, I've, I haven't played for 15 years. So, uh, or certainly 13 years. Um, so it was, it was great to go over the old songs, arrangements, um, rearrange them as well. And play. I was so lucky to be able to play them with those musicians because I was working in the last shows I was doing. Um, it was with the Pilgrim Tale 
album and that was the pilgrim band and for some reason everything worked instrumentally um with those musicians with freedom fields for some reason there's a crossover in terms of sound Mm because you know i have done all sorts of other uh folk rock to you know americana to all sorts of styles but this one worked really well with both brilliant um so segue is really nice into my next question um is there a particular track off the album that you're uh looking forward to playing during the stream i think really you know child the hunter is the 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 most interesting crossover i mean i love the fact that it it rolls along in this hypnotic mysterious tone but it that it tells the story really well um of this nobleman who had to cut him you know the true story of of hunter um you know child the hunter who cut open his horse to try and survive this blizzard yeah. We're out on the moors, you know, only about five miles from where I am now. Um, and it's a story that's fascinated me for ages and one that I think really resonates in the album. Yeah, definitely. Um, again, brilliant segue again. <laughs> Having recently re- listened to the album myself as well, um, I felt something. So when I was listening to it, it had a sort of something that was quintessentially British. Would you say that's a fair comment on the album? I think it certainly is. I mean, there's because of where it's rooted. Uh, it was made in Dartmoor, written about, uh, you know, the Southwest, mm-hmm. um, uh, the majority. I, I could obviously see it as very much an English album. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, but, there, I mean, production-wise, there's a lot of production elements that we, we used from the West Coast producers um, uh, and our time working in America, me and Sean, so my brother who, who produced it. Um, so it, it, that's the crossover into the popular singer-songwriter territory that um, I think we, you know, we, we, we successfully uh, managed to, to um, you know, to use, yeah? Uh, but um, it doesn't always work out. But for some reason, it did work quite well with Freedom Fields, yeah. Was there any particular influence that you took whilst writing the album? Like, sort of, what was the uh, influence behind it, if you will? Um, I guess, you know, the influence always with that, uh, Kitty J to Freedom Fields, was just be honest to who you are as a writer and what you're interested in. In And I, I'm quite sort of journalistic in the way I like to write. I like to write about events and celebrate people and places. And I think that is, you know, certainly true within Freedom Fields and is pretty much true to date, the, the sort of writer I am. Um, so, uh, you know, I think that's really at the heart and at the core of, of Freedom Fields. Yeah. Okay. So when you're writing your music, do you kind of, do you, uh, sort of really history books and, and story books to sort of find influence from to sort of into your music? I do, yes. Uh, I'm, I'm always, I'm constantly buying old books on eBay. I was yeah. doing that lots on uh, through lockdown, uh, always searching those towns and um, markets for old history books. Um, yeah, so there's, there's, I've got, you know, a decent library in a, in a writing studio that I've got. So, yeah, I, I am always looking around to yeah, search. What does it take in those stories for you to sort of be grabbed by it and want to write music about it? I guess, you know, the, I love the hero story. There's, it's always got to be some sort of a, you know, the thing about folk music, you'll always find something that's pretty epic about <laughs> it, um, monstrous or, you know, it's life and death. It's, uh, it's, it, uh, it can't be minimal. It's, it's got to be, you know, maximum appeal. There's got to be something that happened. You know, I've recently written the song about, um, um, a rescue of a whale down on the lizard uh, in the 90s. Um, you know, the, the, a mysterious sounding song that turned into um, Shoals to Turn, the humours mm-hmm. who are searching for um, and calling out when they, they saw the shoals of pilchards, you know, those humours huts that we all see scattered around Cornwall. I don't know, there's all, and I've been writing, I wanted to write a song about that for ages. I'm always fascinated when I see those huts there and how, that sort of hue and cry, that that um, that voice, you know, or the bell or whatever it might be, you know, the signal for them to all cast their nets and go for it. Um, I've always been fascinated by that. So, um, yeah, I guess it depends what how how you're writing as well, where your headspace is, because you are led by the instrument you're working on. Um, so fiddle led songs are generally a bit more in that sort of mysterious dark tone, you know? Yeah, sure. <laughs> Just definitely. fiddle, fiddle. Yeah. Like yeah, yeah, or, yeah. Or, the, or the slow down, very sort of um, 
uh, you know, poignant, uh, could be a love song or, you know, a, 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 a loss of someone. Um, and then, you know, guitar led stuff. Uh, I don't, it, so it, it's almost the, the vehicle you're on, you know, the tool that leads sure. it, the instrument. Yeah. Yeah. So obviously you've had an incredible career throughout your, uh, years um you had mercury prize nominations uh, a litany of awards and you also toured with robert plant and as someone as a led zeppelin fan i find that absolutely uh, awesome so that's really cool um i just wanted to say so yeah when you started out um did you ever imagine that any of that would sort of happen or or you could see yourself sort of doing those things well no definitely not so uh, you know being a fiddle player from dartmoor uh, i've self-taught i've sort of just been on a whirlwind ever since I was 17, really. I signed to a major label at that point. I've been very lucky to have um, had, you know, quite a illustrious career so far, you know, for, for someone who isn't really a, you know, a popular, you know, a pop singer or, you know, I wouldn't see myself along on the, along those lines. You know, right. I have obviously worked with major labels and stuff, but I've tried to stick to my own path um, and, you know, Keep, keep keep to my roots as much as possible, whichever they are. But as as I said, I always love crossing over, you know. Um, and you know, I've I've been very lucky to you know the likes of working with Robert is um you know that's something that came out of the blue. But you know, I was thinking about that the other day when I was chatting to someone with an interview. I worked with the full English, which is as English and as um you know back to the tradition as you can get. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you work with Robert. This <laughs> is totally another world class, not, right. not world class, but um, in terms of musicianship and the way, I'm not saying one's better than the other, but mm. they're so different. And for me to be in that formulated kind of tradition and then into the, uh, the zany, you know, um, uh, experimental world of, of, you know, the plant machine was, um, yeah, it's quite, a, it's quite, it's it's amazing that I'd be able to manage to do that. <laughs> yeah, it must be um, it must be surreal. You must kind of look back and be like, bloody hell! Like, what a what an experience you've had so far, eh? I do think that, yeah. And you know, I would love to do the next thing I'd love to do is, is an actual dance record with someone. Right. Yeah, I mean, that's what I would like to do. I used to love dance music. I still do. Um, you know, and I think there's a way that I could incorporate some of these songs, stories, because the rhythm is always there from dance music, fiddle music, it, right at the core of, of who I am. And I think if I could translate that yeah, with a producer, a decent one, I think we could make a great record together, you know. So, that, I mean, that's something I've, I've, looked, I've been wanting to do. Is there any electronic artists or producers that you've kind of had your eye on that you would love to sort of maybe collaborate with in that sense? I don't know. I mean it's tricky isn't it I, I go for the old school Judge Jules and Oakenfold and yeah. Pete Tong I know is a big fan yeah. of what I do and did a remix of Kitty J and things but you know um, I would like to you know, it'd be great to get someone up and coming who's young enthusiastic and loads of ideas you know what I mean yeah um, I think that would be fabulous so you know any any ideas <laughs> <laughs> you'll have to would, you'll have would, to get on really... TikTok <laughs> Yeah, I think it's probably where it is, isn't it? Yeah, it I need like, someone. Like, yeah, for better or worse, yeah, it definitely yeah. is where it's at. <laughs> I think you might be right. Yeah, um, I've got you. I've got two questions for that. But, um, obviously, you said you want to, you like to stick to your roots and sort of keep yourself grounded. How did how did you manage to navigate that whilst working with major labels? I mean, that was a rocky road because they are always and and I I I can't you know they didn't really understand anything to do with a tradition or. Um, or English folk music. They, they, they were just up for selling, selling you as a pretty boy, yeah. you know, pop singer, really. Yeah. They even tried to drop the word folk and call it English soul, you know, things like that. It's really? just silly. Yeah, some mad, mad ideas that they yeah. had. But, but I think that was just kind of ignorance, really, to mm-hmm. it all, not quite understanding the bigger picture, sell it now. If they don't, pe- And then you'll be able to make some ground. So... You know, there were a few arguments, a few stone words. And, you know, <laughs> I think we just, I kept to where I could try and keep control, you know, but there was certainly points where it came off the tracks. I, yeah. I can see that now, but I think every artist, as I've even chatted to Robert, you know, it always happens. It just happens. It's, it's too much in, in the business for it not to, you know, so you've got to be very careful. Yeah. yeah. I think it's like you're saying, it's kind of, um, 
you're almost like entering the 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 like belly of the beast almost isn't it it's the jaws of of finance and in, in essentially and and you know as much as yeah. they may like your music ultimately their their goal is to sell you and and make money isn't it so it's it's a fine line absolutely i think the days of just being that sort of mystical um tortured musician who sits on the sidelines <laughs> yeah uh you know and makes music and then sends it to a label and they go wonderful uh they're, they're gone you've got to be a business uh, you've got to have a business hat and an artistic hat. And, mm -hmm. and you've got to switch between the two, mm -hmm. you know, because you've got to be careful these days. There's so much going on and things are going so far and wide. It's hard to control it already. Yeah, I agree. It's, um, it's, it's quite an exciting and also worrying time, I think, in a lot of ways, because it's, it's so many, so many things are changing. And like, like, it's like, like for better or worse sort of thing. It's, uh, it's interesting. It's going to be an interesting few years for sure as sort of things develop especially with with streaming which um i would like to sort of wonder like obviously you were you were an established artist before streaming sort of the boom took over um how have you adapted to that and and what changed for you um well <laughs> i'm i'm someone who uh i i almost don't really i mean i understand streaming but you mm. know i look at the uh, fairness and you know the recent deal that was going on with MPs and, you know, the government involvement with the three big majors. And I, uh, you know, I do scratch my head on it really, because it's never going to be fair. I think as they said, and I read the, the gap is just wide. Yeah. I mean, it's enormous now between those sort of grassroots singer songwriters who rely on physical sales and um, actually performing live, you know, it, it's, it's been a really hard year, but others, you know, streaming is up 20% or even mm -hmm. more. And, and, you know, you just see, yeah, the, the, the bigger artists are just they're, they're, they're getting the attention because they've got the big labels, they've got the money and, you know, people aren't necessarily, people are shallow. It's a shallow uh, type of uh, consumer now, really. So I hate to say it, it is though. People true, aren't yeah. investing in artists anymore in the same kind of way. I hate, to, I could get on a, uh, a bit of a rant about <laughs> it, but so I'm a bit of a, um, I'm a bit old school when it comes to, uh, it comes to that. I think, you know, you, Music's about seeing it live. You know, I'm a folk musician, really. You know, so I'm I'm all about playing in front of people and making that count. Um, any other thing that's happened to me really has just been luck uh, around it, I would say. But that's how I see you get the best reaction. Okay. And I think that's why that's the only probably the only way you're going to get an audience to believe and probably follow you properly. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think you're going to get that from streaming. You're just not going to get it. You need someone, you, you need to be able to believe what people are doing. And you'll only get that live now. I think young people won't, they won't see through it otherwise, or, or they won't, they won't invest in it. In the same mm -hmm. way. Would you say sort of like longevity would definitely come from, from live performances then? I do see that. Yeah. I mean, I could, the stream world's only going to get bigger, uh, you know, with gaming and, and, and obviously film and beyond and, and, you know, syncs, a uh, 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 massive for, for you know I've got friends who just rely on that and there's mm -hmm. you know there's friends of mine who are earning 80 grand a year 100 grand a year and just literally writing records from their bedrooms you know yeah yeah and it's happening you know yeah. it's, but it's it's a, such a different it's so disconnected mm -hmm. I don't really get that mm -hmm. you know I I don't I don't I don't know if that's who I am as a musician but I come from a different perspective on it. sure I guess it's um it depends on your outlook really doesn't it like you're saying like for some people that's amazing and then for other people like yourself it's kind of like oh I don't know how real that is you know like it's uh, like you say it almost removes that um sort of like physicality and realness from from music which which personally I think is what makes music so special is that connection you know it's always a background a lot of this streaming uh and I find that uh, disappointing mm -hmm. uh, the background music to it and the way it's pigeonholed within, you know, acoustic moods or whatever, how it's categorized. Yeah. Sure. And the way people are now, um, you know, I guess writing songs, music with that in mind is a bit saddening. Yes. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> I yeah. find that's as bad as the hit, hit wonders or no, it's not as even as good as that, but um, that's a bit, yeah. Yeah. A bit leveling. Yeah, for the, uh, the, the music itself. Yeah. The one thing that I found really interesting, I know I'm interviewing you here, but <laughs> I thought you'd, uh, maybe we could talk about it, is um, uh, the sort of rise of artists being discovered through apps like TikTok. 
but not actually necessarily being discovered for their music per se, but more the personality they have on the social media platform. Their music's almost secondary. That I have found very interesting. I've seen a few artists come up now that I'm like, oh, who's that? Why are they so big? And you listen to the track and then you're like, oh, that's, you know, that's a good track. And then you go on their social media and you're like, oh, it's like almost fully generated sort of through that. It's, um, it's another interesting aspect of the, of the sort of development of the industry, I guess. I guess it's the cross of entertainment, isn't it? It's mm. personality wins, you know, and a lot of people like that. That, that is a big part of folk music. Mm-hmm. You know, they like a chitter chatter comedian right. where, who's, who sings great guitar. You know, yeah, yeah. That, that is a big thing that a yeah. lot of folk, folkies like, you know. Um, and I get it. But, you know, I, I have to say, yeah, that's hiding behind a little bit. I don't know. You get lost uh, a little bit. Um, I don't know. It's, uh, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a strange crossover there, isn't it? Because mm-hmm. there's lots of people who are trying to, you know, I, I know what you mean, like Lewis Capaldi and people like that who are trying to be comedians. And, yeah. you know, they are funny people. Yeah, they are, yeah. And, and, and talented, I guess, at what they're doing. But, you know, I think, it, yeah, it's sort of, uh, I don't know, it smothers everything else, doesn't it? Definitely. I think it's interesting to discover someone's music via, say, like a video you saw of them, like you say, doing a, almost a stand-up bit. Or, or a, yeah. a sketch almost. And then you're like, oh, that was hilarious. And then you're like, oh, they're a musician. You know, yeah. it's, uh, <laughs> it's, I find that is, it's interesting. Like you say, it's almost like the, the umbrellas got wider and you have to sort of exactly. do more under that. Yes, yeah, it's, it's interesting. Um, yeah, no, you're right. Uh, lastly, um, I just want to say after uh, the stream, what can we expect yeah. from the Seth Lakeman? Well, I guess after the stream, I, like I say, I, I have been writing lots of music, lots sure. of songs. So uh, I'm going to get into the studio and try and record them. And then, you know, fingers crossed, it looks set that there'll be work this summer. Sure. Um, so you know, I'm hoping in some capacity we'll be out there playing some live music throughout July and August. Um, and then certainly a full tour in the autumn, um, supporting a new album, fingers crossed, you know, if, it, if it all goes well. So, yeah, yeah we'll just keep, keep moving forward. Um, plowing on you know you've got to i think you've got to face music you know it's it, it's going to be interesting to see how the industry looks you know when it suddenly uh, uh um breaks the surface again sure because it's been under for a long time now yeah um so uh you know streaming's one thing but you know it's how are artists bearing up how are they mm-hmm. surviving there's a lot that won't be able to you know in, in genres like jazz, classical folk, you know, the specialist genres. It's be interesting to see what's happened, but you know, I, I we're certainly going to keep on, keep on, keep on going. Yeah. Brilliant. Well, that's what we like to hear. And hopefully, uh, yeah, in the summer, we'll see you uh, in a field somewhere or in a venue or wherever. And to be honest, I'll take a live performance from anyone anywhere at this point. <laughs> yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm the same. I'm missing seeing music, real music. Yeah, like same. That. It's uh, so hopefully we'll see you soon and hopefully catch you in the summer. Thank you for, yeah, joining us and, and answering our questions. Pleasure, buddy. Yeah, you take Thanks care. Have much. a good one. Yeah, you too. Bye-bye. Have a good day. Cheers.